Good evening, TC, and welcome all to our weekly podcast, Curry View, with the Isle of Hillsborough, Mr. Terry Curran. If you're listening to the free first half on either Acast or Spotify, you can follow the links on our socials and access the full podcast via either Apple or become a Patreon or the w's.patreon.com forward slash SRB Media on Twitter at Curran View, on Facebook, The Curran View. We're also on Insta, The Current View, and you can join the chat in the group, which is now over 3,000 strong, and that's also called, surprisingly, The Current View. Steady away, TC. Well, I'm going to make you smile, because I know we haven't heard it for a couple of weeks. Yes, I'm steady away. <laughs> I've missed you, mate. I mean, we've, um, we haven't done a podcast since the, uh, the back end, the final weekend of last season. We do start our football forecasts again this week. I think it's either, what is it, Series 3 or Series 4 now? We've been doing it for three or four years, and you beat me every year on the football forecast. You're not surprised, are you? No, I'm not actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will be surprised if you've picked a magic moment this week, because there hasn't been an awful lot of football. There has been some friendly, so you may have. Well, I've been watching, I have been watching the friendlies. Yeah. Um, and I've picked one or two magic moments uh, of uh, Jesus. Uh, obviously, he's moved yeah. to, to Arsenal. Um, it took me nearly about 14 months, practically 15 months, to recover from my uh, injury. But <clears throat> don't forget, when he first came to um, Man City, he finished up getting a serious knee injury. And um, it's taken him a while to recover. And with having that many great players, and I always thought he was a great player himself, uh, but he looks as though he's on fire at Arsenal. I know it's only friendlies and you can take that two ways. You, I've seen it I, both ways where you've done really well in pre-season and then set off poorly and vice versa. But uh, he scored a couple of great goals on tour. And I remember, uh, remember, memorize the word I'm looking for, Gabby, say, I can't pronounce it now, Chelsea, yeah. uh, yesterday. I watched the game against Chelsea and he was absolutely outstanding. Yeah, he does look as though going to be good value for what was it 45 million and and I think if we do remember when he first started at Man City he was scoring goals for fun and you're right you have to factor in these injuries and feeling your fitness again and, and feeling that confidence to go into them areas or your body allowing you to go into them areas to uh, score them goals so hopefully he can uh, hit the high notes at Arsenal. Anyone who gets a crucial ligament yeah. injury will take him because that's what it took me. And I mean, the early, the the early uh, crucial ligaments or the earlier crucial ligaments, like the cloughs of this world, yeah. early sixties. You know, it finished players' uh, careers, uh, and they have got better and better. But it took me a good fourteen months, um, and I was watching a documentary on him, um, and I didn't realise he'd had that injury myself. I can remember getting injured, but then you know, you forget all about it. Yeah. Um, I was watching a documentary and, and it, it showed you when he got injured. And um, obviously Manchester City are winning. They've looked to change a winning team, mm. you know, uh, especially forwards if forwards are doing well. And Manchester City have got that many great players that um, it took him a while to get back. But he did show a glimpse of the brilliance uh, of his football uh, at times. But this pre-season uh, for, for Arsenal, he's looked sharp, he's scored goals. Um, but there's been some fantastic little moves from, from teams. Even, even um, the England women uh, goal against Spain, the winner, yeah. was an absolutely brilliant goal. I mean, I tell you before, I like women's football. I just don't like the wokeness of I want, not just women's football uh presented but to all all football how it's presented yeah and that's what putting me off of uh, watching a lot of uh, tv at moment in time with all the wokeness on it all of it all yeah i absolutely totally agree and um, my magic moments are georgia stanway's goal against spain i thought it was absolutely sublime and didn't that ball move and and two players that i've picked out magic moments that both of these players have produced ella Tooney, uh plays manchester united 
in England. She has come on a sub. I think she's different class. The touches uh, that she's shown on the ball and movement, her composure, I think are absolutely first class. And a French uh, girl, she wears number 20, Delphine Cascarino. I think she's an absolute dangerous player. When she gets in that final third, she can go either way. Good feet, good balance. And yeah, she's got everything about her, to be fair. Nice looking kid as well, to, to be quite truthful. So, right, so. She's, got everything, she's got everything going for her then. That's what Absolutely, saying. yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> a nice thing. We can get our own back, can't we? Because the girls used to put pin-ups of, you know, uh, pictures of you and Kevin Keegan and Alan Hudson and Charlie George and Stan Bowles and, and all them. And now, I mean, I'm a bit too old, really, to put all pictures of Ella Toon and Cascarou you know, and all them girls but, on my but, bedroom, but, but the young the kids will. will do that, won't yeah. they? So, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But a couple of things on on the, the women's football. Mm -hmm. I, I was very impressed with, with, with the French team last and night. The, yeah. And I didn't like the Dutch team, but how the French team didn't win in the 90 minutes, I will never know. You can, you can say some bad finishing, you can say some go, uh, great goalkeeping yes. by the Dutch goalkeeper. Um. But well, I'm going to make I'm going to make a, a comment here. How uh, how well the Dutch manager has improved mm. this England team. Oh, it's incredible, hundred percent incredible. And and listen, I was a, a a big admirer of Phil Neville more than Gary's as a player. Me, yeah. I thought he was I thought he was quicker. Uh, I thought he would have been a better right back. And I do like Gary Neville. Don't get me wrong. Mm. Uh, but her coaching has improved that England team. And I've watched uh, Man United's uh, pre-season game. Different tempo altogether. Yeah. Altogether. You know, the movement, uh, always looking to play forward. I know that the game yesterday, they were tuning up and uh, Ten Hag wasn't too happy with the uh, how the game finished. But took everything into consideration uh, for both sides. Um, and, and it was a game of two halves. The, the weather conditions were, were atrocious. Um, but I'm very impressed w with them. Chelsea may, may be having a, a bit of a blip at the moment in time because he doesn't seem to be happy that he hasn't got the right players coming in uh, to chill. So there's going to be some interesting and some uh, disappointing teams uh, this season. Absolutely. Everton as well, Your former one of your former clubs, got an absolute... Uh, pasting against Minnesota. Inch is the manager there, by the way, isn't he? So, um, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm guessing that, you know, whether that's how they got the game, the, the connection with Inch and Everton, but my word, 4 0. I mean, I know that, that, as you say, as you've alluded to, it's about fitness and, you know, if you can get the ground running, but you don't read too much into these friendly results. You look at when the, the, the serious stuff starts on 6th of August for the Premier League and this weekend for the Championship. But you don't want to be getting 4 0 drubbins, do you? No. Uh, and, and like I said, Chelsea got that mm. the other day against Arsenal. Yeah. But going back to the Everton uh, scenario, they got to. Uh, they didn't get beat 4 0. They got absolutely a pasting. Yeah. And when you lose your best player, what looks is always going to get your goals mm. to talk to, uh, to Charleston. Yeah. It's going to make it even worse for you. Yeah. And no disrespect, you know, I've never been a keen lover when they signed him from, from Burnley. Uh, Everton look at a very ordinary team. And they're taking on. Signed who from Burnley too? And they're carrying on from the performance of the last season. Yeah. What did you say then, Gab? Signed, Sorry, signed who from Burnley? The, the centre half, King. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, out. I think he's awful. I was never a big admirer mm. of him. You know, um, football's changing. It's going. You know, they're looking for players what can come out from the back, and it's not. Playing out from the back, what's a problem? What causes a team problem? But he's playing out from the back with players what can't pass a ball or control a ball. Absolutely. Yet, yet the coaches can't see that. That that's mm. what's uh, the disappoint uh, disappointing thing of it all. I mean, we used to play out from the back in the seventies as well. By the way, kids, if you yeah. you know whoever's listening um, to the podcast, we had brilliant players on the ball in the seventies. I mean, um, I know. Sorry. 
on bad pictures. Absolutely. And I know these modern day coaches and the modern day presenters, etc., and the wokeness of everything in football would have you believe that it was invented in 92 and we've just invented how to pass a ball out from the back. But we've always played with composed footballers. I mean, you could put uh, Kevin Beattie, a Roy McFarland, a Bobby Moore, a Colin Todd, any of our fabulous um, uh, defenders of the 70s into an Everton team now. I mean, to be fair, if you put Sadie and McFarlane, they'd probably improve it, even though they are 72. Listen, I'm a big, I was a big Real Ferdinand fan as a player. As a player. Forget everything else. Hmm. I like John Terry, right? But it's only opinion. None of them or none of today's players would ever, Hmm. ever come near, near Kevin Beattie. Yeah. Not nowhere near, because mm. he got everything. Pace, uh, could pass the ball, aggression, understood the game, and I don't like. To, and you've never heard me compare it, have you? But no. when they when they talk about football, at the Premier League, mm. the, the brainwave, the the people won't listen to it. The people fall for it. It's like everything else, you know. If if it's if it's repetitive, eventually it sinks in with some people. Yeah. And that's what's happened. You know, football started in in, in, in 1992 when the Premier League started mm. to where the, the, the modern society. Absolutely. It drives me up the wall. But while we're talking about Kevin Beattie, we, uh, we've linked up a little bit with the uh, Kevin Beattie Foundation. There is a big event on the 13th of August. In fact, uh, Huddy has been invited uh, to it. He's going to be talking about Kevin. He was a big fan of, of Kevin, loved Kevin. He was on a couple of England uh, uh, duty uh, games. Uh, one when they were over in France and Huddy tells a great story about Brian Greenoff and, uh, and Kevin at the bar. And he played against him many times. He said it was always a joy to play against Ipswich and to play against Kevin because he was such a fabulous player. So on next week's podcast, we're going to try and get, um, get a guest on. Uh, Malcolm, who's running the Kevin Beatty Foundation. So there's one or two things that I do want to cover regarding Kevin. And they're doing that because 50 years ago, uh, that weekend of the August uh, the 13th, he made his debut against Manchester United. And uh, they say there's a lot going on regarding Kevin Beatty. Uh, it is 50 years ago since the beat made his debut and today the beat still goes on and there's a statue of the did, great Kevin Beatty outside Portman Road. Yeah, it did, it did funny how they do it after he, he died when he was struggling. But he always says that. Where 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 were they? Where were they? Yeah. Where where were all the other people then? You know, to be fair, this is the fans. It's not the yeah, club. Well, it's the same with uh, Stan I'm Bowles. I'm not talking about the fans. I'm talking about absolutely, the and I'm talking about the the yeah. football club. Yeah, you know. Kevin Beatty was one of the world great elite mm. defenders. What anybody will ever see anywhere mm. in the world. How you many know, times did you play against as, Kev? But, but but as soon as he was as soon as he was injured, yeah, right. Well, so it's like anything else. Once you are finished in the game injured, they don't want to know. They don't want to know you. Yeah. A bit different today with a lot of footballers because they're coming out of multi-millionaires and mm. then you know uh, they're not having to do anything for them so they do use them a little bit more I would say today than I think I played against them a couple of times yeah. uh, but I saw him a lot you know obviously on TV a lot mm. just absolutely one of the world's greatest defenders of all time in. yeah and, and you know you can, you, you can say you, you're proud to say with English Absolutely, and I think you're right too. So, had it not been for uh, you know the injuries that that unfortunately he had, he'd have made hundred England caps, wouldn't he, easily? Oh, listen, it's mm. funny because he's a defender, and you don't really get defenders getting serious injuries. Yeah, do you? But he had such pace as well, didn't he? You know, when you get them pace, powerful pace. That, that players, was powerful. yeah, absolutely, that was powerful pace. That, yeah, it yeah. was. You know, it was lightning quick, but powerfully lightning yeah. quick. You know, he got everything. He got every mortal thing: the composure, the vision, the understanding, the the uh, confidence, the arrogance, and the the beauty to be able to mix with anyone. Absolutely, too. So the great and the light, Kevin Booter. But you're absolutely spot on with that. Um, 
that statement. Udi always says to me, when when you pass away, they'll put statues up of you and, and they'll um they'll make out you know a, a, a we all love how all caring people. the football club are towards that player. But when that player actually needs, and I'm not saying that Ipswich didn't, because I don't know, but I certainly know in terms of Alan Hudson when he was on a live support machine, Chelsea done nothing. They didn't even send his mum a bunch of flowers. However, in more recent times when Chelsea, former Chelsea players have been injured, that have been very prominent in the media, Chelsea have bent over backwards. But that is the modern game. It isn't just Chelsea, and we're not picking on Chelsea. I'm just giving it as an example because I know that that is fact. But Udi is absolutely spot on. They put the statues up of you when you pass away and they do bugger all for you when you need it. Yeah, exactly. Sad. And but the older true. players compared to what the, oh. the lads get. And listen, yeah. I'm not one of them. What You never hear me say complain about what they earn today good no, luck to them absolutely they, they should never go out of the game without any money if they if they look after their money they should never ever want for anything oh the ice you know the premier and the championship yeah the level. Elite, yeah yeah two so, three book corner is uh, another feature that we've done last season we're going to be doing it this season as well so the first book that i've picked out i haven't got it but i have ordered it the Beat by Kevin Beatty. It's his autobiography. And I think it's going to be a fantastic read because by all accounts, he, he turned up to Ipswich with absolutely bugger all. I think he turned up with a carrier bag with his stuff in and then the legend was born. But again, when you're looking at that Ipswich team, they were a great team in the 70s, wasn't they? One of the great sides that... that aren't from big cities. For example, Ipswich were fantastic. Stoke City were fantastic. The Sheffield power, United, absolutely. They're the same power as a Nottingham Forest. Yeah, absolutely. Forest you know, one and Derby uh, County, of course. Yeah, Derby County. Yeah. Uh, when uh, being successful, getting the 30-odd thousand people in yeah. there uh, and a great atmosphere, absolutely fabulous play surface to play on. Yes. You know, uh, and like I said, it was... It, it come from an ordinary background, just like myself. Mm -hmm. Down the work type of guy, uh, what was born to be a footballer. Yeah. I mean, we were just born to be a footballer. It's so much ability for a defender. Mm. We ain't done true. Absolutely. So and like I, said, was, I mean, the, the, they've, had, they've had three or four great teams under Bobby Robson. The Muirman and... Um, Franz Tyson. 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 The other one. You know, uh, Butcher and uh, Osman. Yeah, Gates George, and Brazil. You know, yeah. George Burley. Uh, Mickey Mills. 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 Uh, Gates, absolutely. Walk. I played Gates. John Walker was another one. Great yeah. player. Um, Paul Mariner. Uh, Before them, Colin Ville joined as well. And yeah, but, yeah. Alan Hamilton. Hunter. Yeah, yeah, Brian Hamilton. Hunter. What was the centre for? Weimark. Trevor, Trevor Weimark. Weimark. What a player he was. Woody Woods. Weimark. Woods, the Clive winger. Woods, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, some great players, great players. And he were, listen, I always did well there, you know, I always played well down there. I, yeah. I remember when I went to Everton, in my second game for Everton on loan, I ripped it for Japan. Yeah. You know, Derby County, we beat them. You know, Southampton, we got a draw there. You know, that was another team like Luton. I absolutely ripped them apart in, in, in all the three times I played against them. Well, I think I played more than three times, but... Yeah. Always did well at Ipswich. Always a great. I also like enjoyed playing down there. Yeah, they're a great club, and and again, Sir Alf Ramsey bought Ipswich up, yeah. didn't they? And and won the uh, the league in the first season, as as Forrest did uh, in the seventies. They done that in the early sixties. But you know, falling on bad times of late, Ipswich it would be great. Nottingham Forest now are back in the Premier League and I would like to see Ipswich go through the gears and get back into the Premier League because so I think they're a fantastic club. I've always had a soft spot. I've always liked them. Win and QPR. Year. I fancy them to win the league this year. Sorry, what did you say about QPR? And QPR, I've always liked QPR because yeah. of the 70s team and the way they yeah. used to play yeah. football. We stand. Teddy yeah. Venables was there, Jerry Francis, Don Gibbons, you know, yeah. before that, Rodney Marsh, of course. You know, they've always had great, pl well, great players. Yeah, great players in the 70s. 
But the 70s... Dave produced, Thomas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what a winger he was, wasn't he, Dave Thomas? But I'm looking through the um, When Saturday Comes, because uh, in the latest edition, you've got uh, Haaland on the front. Uh, I think he's going to be a tremendous signing. And then they've got a season's guide. And I went straight to League One. And they've, they've got a predicted table who they think will be top and second. And they've got your boy Sheffield Wednesday top. And the Ipswich Town second. Bolton Wanderers third. I fancy Ipswich, me. Yeah. I watched us on Saturday and I thought, we. I know it's only pre-season, yeah. but... We didn't get we we got destroyed. I don't know four, but it could have been seven. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I'm hoping more than all else that you know we've got our first ten games. I've just looked at them tonight. I got I got my friend Mike Gabby Das to to uh, veal them off for me. Yeah. And just because I'm coming on here, we were just talking about Sheffield Wednesday the game on Saturday against uh, Wigan, and I said, "What's our first ten games, Mike? You know, when he when he uh, I think we've got." Um, Pom Portsmouth, yes. uh, Portsmouth, um, MK Dons away, Charlton, Bolton, uh, and then Forest Green. Competitive league, that is, you know, now League One, isn't it? Unbelievable. Mm. You know, um, and then after that, it, we, we, did go, it, we did go through them. So the first 10 games, it's important to get, yes, you always get somebody coming out of the pack from near the bottom, don't you? Yes, you do. You know. But you know the team what really two teams what really set off really well, nearly always ninety nine point five percent always go up. Yeah. So I think it, I think it's going to be difficult man this year. I really do. Yeah, I do. I'm looking down there. You're Sheffield Wednesday, Ipswich, Bolton, Peterborough. They've got fourth. Because I mean, yeah. Peterborough are good <laughs> at that level. In that first ten game, first five games. Yeah. Pompey, MK Duns, Wicker, Oxford, Barnsley, Charlton, Plymouth, Barnsley. Derby, Bristol Rovers. Yeah. You know, there's some decent teams in there. People think, oh, it's going to be a walk in the park for Derby. They're a big club. They won the league in 72 and 75. Sheffield Wednesday, a big club. Well, yes, Sunderland were a big club, and now they've got out of it. But it took them several seasons. When you go down into League well, One, you turn into a League One team. League. Absolutely. And struggle to get out of it. 100% so you say because you're not a big club when you're in that smaller league you're a big club but you're not a big team and that's yeah. the problem because the team is littered with players that just aren't that good hence that's why they're in league one but then, you, then you turn it round yeah you're a big club or they all want to be of course you do yeah I mean you know, so imagine you going to Willsborough well, well that's the scout when the beach every Wednesday of course and when is. you play the local derbies you know, I mean, we're not going to be playing with them because they've been promoted. Yeah. But your bars is what's come down. Yeah. They are so difficult, them games. Mm. You know, because you can throw the form out the window. You know, they seem to raise the game even more so. Of course they do. So and, and that you... It's going to be a very difficult season for Sheffield Wednesday. I hope that we go up. Yeah. Um, And I believe that we'll go up. But, you know, there's always going to be obstacles. Uh for Wednesday because of when you look at them this is the third or fourth time now they've been in that division yeah. and that, once you've been in it once you should never want to go back down there again yeah. and it's been run badly by a lot of bad people mm -hmm. and a lot of bad managers Mind you, I think we've just dodged a bullet. Pacini isn't buying Birmingham City, thank God. I listened to him a couple of times on uh, radio interviews and to say it was car crash is an understatement. My word, that bloke seems an absolute fruit loop. Well, he's either got dementia or he's a comedian. <laughs> or, yeah, a complete oh, fruit loop. <laughs> Billy Lyre. Oh, he's unbelievable. I don't mean that to be horrible. No, you? I don't. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, talk sport. They're as daft as him for keep having him on. Well, they did it because it gets good ratings. Mm. That's why they do it, don't they? Get Bassini well, on, get Bassini on. I mean, the bloke is an absolute lunatic. Or that's how he comes across as. He might be a very nice guy. I don't know Lawrence Bassini. Don't knock, don't knock that. Same with some managers. But probably not. They are nice guys. Yeah, absolutely. But, but the way he, he come across, I was open-mouthed listening to that. I thought... Oh, my days. Did I just hear that? Well, you, yeah, you heard it. I yeah. mean, I mean, Jordan was spot on. He was. Not the guy's a complete lunatic. Mm. 
And I don't mean that in a nasty way. Well, he did say, he said the villagers just lost an idiot. Mm. But, you know, there you go. Simon's on holiday and hurry up back, Simon, because without Simon Jordan on talk sport, I don't listen to I don't listen to him unless he's on. No, absolutely. It is sometimes unlistenable too. But what is also unread, well, you don't want to not read it. I personally haven't read it yet. There's me running my mouth and I haven't read it. But I have got the book. Uh, David Tossel, all crazy now. Uh, sent to us from um, andymyfootballbooks.com. We do a regular podcast, as you know, TC, the Football Book Podcast. Um, our next part eight is out this week. Chris has been away. Um, so the new podcast will be out this week. And this is the book that, that uh, Andy has recommended. It's a fabulous book. You don't want to drop it on your foot because you'll probably break a toe. It's a 500 uh, page piece. Phenomenal. There's Brian Clough on the on the front cover. Uh, there's uh, George Best as well. Kevin Keegan smacking Billy Bremner. And it's everything that a 70s book should be. Don Reeves on the back and uh, Alan Hudson as well. Yeah, I might buy that book. It, it seems a, a phenomenal read. I mean, the three degrees are in the the uh, the front cover. And by putting my glasses on there, it definitely is against Ipswich Town. That's Paul Mariner just um, just to the right-hand side of the cover as well. But it's uh, phenomenal. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a great read. All crazy now. And that pretty much did some up the 70s. I do want to give a shout out to Back Pass as well, the uh, magnificent retro magazine, the latest issue, uh, summer 2020 is out now, issue 80. And uh, Howard Wilkinson's on the front, Howard's way. All right. One of your former managers, not your manager, but a former manager of, of Sheffield he's Wednesday. He's the last English manager to win the... Uh... Yeah, 1991, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so... Never a great fan of his, if I'm absolutely honest. I didn't like the way Wilkinson played football. His philosophy wasn't for me. But I did like to watch his Leeds United team uh, play football. And strangely enough, when they won the league, they didn't win a game away from home the season after, did they? Yes, no, it was this the season after. They had a night, yeah, complete nightmare. European Cup or Champions, European Cup, because it weren't the Champions League then, in early rounds, mm. you know. For some unknown reason... He's, he has done well as a manager. Yeah. You know, I just didn't love the way how we played the beautiful game, you know, so. I didn't. And when I heard, I heard and him on. Forward, heavy, for me, I didn't like, you know, you've got, yeah. to have, you've got to have a leader and you've got to have a boss. Mm. Right? And Cluffy was a boss, what people admired and respected. You know, I just, it just weren't for me, I was Wilkinson. And nothing mm. against the man at all. It's just, I didn't, the way, I didn't like the way how his team played football. And and how he came across us. Absolutely, I remember a, an interview. I don't know if it was on Sports Night Match of the Day or or um, or any other broadcast uh, that I watched or listened to. But I do remember him saying that he was the manager of Leeds United Football Club. He's not there to entertain. I thought, you know what, the the, the off button goes on whenever your team plays now, mate, because I like to watch entertaining teams. And back when Don Reavy had Leeds United, they were out for results. Yes, of course they were, but they were also entertainers as well. They played a great brand of football and it leads us nicely to uh, the third book in Book Corner. Um, Les Cocker, fantastic one of the best titles there that, that I've seen. It's called Cocker Hoop. I mean, what a great, what a great title. He's a key man for both Ramsey and uh, Reavy by his son, Dave, and Robert Endicott. So that book is out at the end of the month. I certainly will be buying them. Again, I know I don't read them, but I do buy them. I am on holiday next week, so I'm I'm taking a book or two to read, but I bet you I don't read any more than three or four pages because I'll be working on a couple of podcasts. I've got a podcast coming up with um, Alan Kirbishley. Oh, that'll be interesting, yeah. We, we've redone the uh, Alan Hudson, My Life, My Music, Ozzy, Hutch, and a horse named Sea Biscuit. So that's coming out. The current view will be coming out. It's busy. There's loads of 
projects and topics and podcasts that I'm working on. So uh, I am going to take a couple of seventies books, and I do hope to read a little bit. But um, on this day, to always ask, people always ask me, uh, "Did I play for England?" The answer is no. Mm-hmm. But be- before uh, the day I got my injury, uh, my knee ligament injury for Forest against Burnley, yeah. I was picked. I was picked in the squad. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to www.patreon.com forward slash SRB Media or just follow the links in the description. Thank you.